Just one hour west from Auckland City, in the heart of the Waitakere Ranges, you'll find some treasure. This beautiful and isolated area known as Watapu has long remained a secret to most. Although Watapu seems like undiscovered land, it actually has a long history full of drama and excitement. Hi, I'm Bruce Harvey. I'd like to take you today on a tour of this remarkable place. Watabu has been part of my family's history for a long, long time. And I'd like to tell you some of the stories that make up this really incredible place. Watapu is located just around from the northern entrance of the Manukau Harbour. It sits in an open valley, surrounded by rocky mountains covered in bush. Of course, being on the west coast, it is bordered by the famous black sand and dunes in the wild waters of the Tasman Sea. By 1853, the Crown had purchased most of the land in West Auckland. This was the start of European involvement in the area. Among them were my ancestors, the Gibbons family. In 1854, John Gibbons, with his family in tow, embarked on a long journey from St John's, Newfoundland to New Zealand, bringing with him milling machinery. When John arrived, he purchased land at Huia and set up two timber mills. Eleven years later, John suddenly passed away, leaving the family business to his son Ebenezer. Not long after, a new mill was opened in the Botafu Valley. Ebenezer's brothers, Robert and Nicholas, Nicholas being my great-grandfather, managed the mill together. By 1868, the mill was in full production due to the fact that the valley was full of cowrie. I'm standing on the mill site itself of yesteryear, and behind me is the earth holding dam that stretched right across the stream bed. Huge earth banks and a wooden dam braced the stream, with a large water wheel providing power. Logs were transported to the mill via driving dams, log chutes and bullocks. A wooden tramway was built to bring the sawn timber from the mill to the wharf, ready to be exported. You can still see today some of the remnants of the wooden tramway. And right here we can see the remains of the wharf. The wharf was built into the northeastern side of Paratutai Island, where the water was deep and the rocks provided shelter. Back then it was easier to travel by sea, and only hunger was only an hour away, making the harbour route the best way to bring in supplies. With this new settlement steaming ahead, a place to cook, clean and sleep was the next requirement. My great-grandfather, Nicholas, built a one and a half storied homestead which later became part of the Watapu Lodge. It had a shingle roof, six bedrooms, and a veranda wrapped around the front. And you can see that the lodge is in still very good condition. This is the main building of the lodge complex. It was here that my great-grandmother Matilda and he, they had their eight children, and they farmed the valley and grew vegetables for the mill. In 1877, the mills were sold to a Dunedin firm. My great-grandparents, however, stayed on at the homestead and continued farming. Then when my great-grandfather died in 1900, he passed along the business to my grandparents, Fred and Laura. Not long after, the area started becoming popular for hunting and fishing. My grandparents recognised the attraction and opened their homestead up to borders as a way of making extra money. Before long, business was booming and they decided to extend the homestead into a lodge. The small post office which used to sit on the wharf was brought down to the house along with some of the cottages from the mill. By the end of this period, the first electric generator run by water had been installed. Fred and Laura supplied a full service to their guests and Watapu became a fun and interesting place to stay. 
One of the lovely activities uh, was the dances and socials that were held in the cave, this big cave here. Uh, there was a wooden floor put down and it may still be there, but uh, the other thing was that they had a lovely accordion band and that really added to the whole evening. Milling in the valley had ended by 1921. Only eight years later, my grandfather gave up the lease title of the lodge, ending three generations of my family's association with Watapu. Almost a hundred years later, we arrive at the present day and age, where five of the families have since managed the lodge. Although it has had its difficulties, for most of its time, the lodge has been run as a very fine establishment. I remember in the mid-1930s when uh, the Farleys ran the lodge, uh, my mother and father used to bring my sister and I down here for holidays. Uh, it was an incredibly wonderful place. Um, we would go out fishing, swimming, hiking, tramping, doing all those adventurous things. And then we would guess, get dressed for dinner, which was a white tablecloth affair. They were really wonderfully adventurous and lovely holidays. Now let's go and have a chat with the present leaseholders and see what the lodge is like 140 years after my great-grandfather first built the homestead. And why do you think people like Potipu so much? I think it appeals to a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Mm. Fishing, some are attracted by the history, a lot of trampers, there's a superb network of tram tramping tracks here, um, there's camping, people mm. stay at the lodge, mm. yeah it has wide appeal. I think probably it's close to Auckland and it's really wild, so it offers that contrast from the city life to come out here and do something really different. What new initiatives have you brought to the lodge? I think quite a few things have changed since we've been here. Um, the power system, for example, used to be run wholly on diesel and um, has changed completely from diesel to alternative energy. Mm -hmm. Um, power generation. So that's a big change. I think each proprietor of the lodge probably attracts a clientele over time and I think our guests are probably more interested in the environment, um, more eco in a way, than has been the case in the past. Thank you, Martin Allison. Watapu will always be a treasure in my mind. The lodge houses many happy memories for myself and anyone else that has fallen in love with the valley. The homestead will remain an historic building to remind us of our past, but I wonder what the future holds for it.